There you go. Okay. That's a beautiful photo. Okay, you're up, Jerry. Well, this one was when we were visiting Martha's brother and, and uh, sister-in-law down in the Sarasota Beach area of Florida at a restaurant. And I looked out the window and saw those clouds like that and thought, wow, that's spectacular. So I ran outside with my camera and just snapped that photo just because I thought it was so beautiful and so unique. It is. Very cool. I thought it was two pictures. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It looked first when I looked at it, I thought it was two pictures. You yeah, know, one no, of it's not. Yeah, it's the clouds up above, and then the uh -huh. then the clear sky, and then the beach. And the the storm moved just south of where we were at, so we actually didn't get a lot of rain. But it's it's not two pictures. It's just the way those clouds were moving in. When I and like I said, when I looked out the window where we were sitting having uh, dinner that night, and, and uh, looked saw that, and I thought, oh wow. Yeah, that's so cool. I just ran out and grabbed it, but that's near uh, Sarasota Beach, Florida. Wow. Very cool. Yep. I like it. Hi. Hey, Jerry. Marilyn and I have stayed at uh, Anna Maria Island a few times, which is not far from Sarasota. No, no, that's in fact, that's really, I think, where we were at. Oh, area. really? Yeah, I think so. Oh. So we'll have to let people tell Jonathan when to change slides. So when you're done with your slide and say next slide, please, or something to that effect. Okay, well, I'm done talking about that one. <laughs> okay. Next. Wow. This is when we were visiting my son up in Juneau, Alaska and took a, uh, oh, I, I guess you would call it just a little ferry boat ride up into a area that went up to a, uh, uh, where there was a, a glacier that was, you know, where some of the pieces were breaking off the glacier. And that just happened to be floating by where we were at. And I just thought it was real pretty to see that blue ice floating by uh, in mm -hmm. the background. And that was just another one just happened to be in the right place at the right time. And, and with the clouds in the background and everything, I just thought it was a real interesting picture. Yeah, beautiful. And, and, uh, that area of Alaska is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it is incredibly beautiful. Well, I was on a boat up there. They, they netted the, uh, the ice from the glacier and they put it in our drink. So we were actually drinking. Really? Wow. Uh, I mean, when we got up to the face of the glacier, there were all kinds of <clears throat> all kinds of wildlife up there and the, you know I, I don't even remember what all there were but and when we were going back down we saw a couple of bear and some moose and just all kinds of things but if you've never taken a uh, uh, Alaska cruise I highly recommend it yeah, yeah, I <clears throat> yeah. Well, is, that, is that a seven there was it July what what month was it uh, you know what? I don't. I honestly don't recall. But okay. it, was probably, it probably was in you know July or early August. You have there. a you have a date down at the bottom that looks like maybe a seven. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I see that now. Yeah. It's been we quite were, a while ago. We were supposed to be in Alaska this past July. Aww. I yeah. know. We'll it's wait a couple of years until they get those boats real clean, and then we'll yeah, go. It, it's a beautiful trip. It really is. That's where I was on 9-11 in Ketchikan. Oh, oh was it really? On, wow. a boat, on a boat, yep. Wow. Wow. Oh. There was nothing to do but to finish the cruise. Right. We've hmm. taken both an Alaskan and a Hawaiian cruise, and I think overall I like the Alaskan one better. Probably yeah. because of what Jerry just said about seeing so much wildlife. Yeah. Yeah. Ours was a landlocked we cruise. Outside of Juneau, there's a uh, there's a glacier outside of Juneau, and we went for we went for a walk alongside that glacier up into the mountains beside it, and it's just enormously tall pine trees. Just you just can't hardly imagine how tall they are. And underneath these pine trees, along the hike that we took, were ferns that were five and six foot tall. Just, um. 
just really, just really, really beautiful. Did your son still yeah. live up there, Jerry? I'm sorry, what? Did your son live up there? Yes, he does. He still lives in Juneau. He's actually the manager of a ski resort uh, in, in Juneau that's, uh, that's on an island just across the, the main from, from where Juneau's at. And the thing that's interesting about Alaska, when you literally, when you, there's only two ways you can get to Juneau, either you either have to fly or, or take a boat. And if you fly in, you'll fly over the, it's uh, these Alaska, uh, I don't know, I've, I've forgotten what it's called, but in any event, there's a, the, there are mountains all on the uh, east side of Juneau. And those mountains feed 46 glaciers up there. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's just, you know, it's just uh, really, really different. Then the, that Mendenhall Glacier I mentioned a moment ago, we were just up there last August and that thing has just receded like crazy. You just can't imagine how much that thing has receded in probably the four or five years we were up there the last time before that. I mean, you know, it's, there are times in the winter up there where it's actually a little bit warmer up in Juneau than it is here in Kansas City. Really? That's true. Okay. Now it's, the, the other thing that's really different is they get so much rain you just can't imagine. They get about 250 inches of rain a year. Wow. And I wow. talked to my son on the phone the other day and he said it had rained for about 12 straight days. Wow. Uh, it would not be fun. So if you if you go to a if you go to a bar up there or something like that, all the people, including all the women, are all wearing galoshes and <laughs> And they look like they just came in from camp in some place. That's just the way everybody dresses up there. Sure. Did you see uh, a lot of otters? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love them. You love them? <laughs> Lynn, Lynn Knudsen, too. They're our, we both think they're our favorite. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Charlie, you're up. Okay, so no mystery as to what I'm going to show you. It's Thailand, mm -hmm. and um, thus the hat. I bought the hat as a sun hat in Thailand. When we get back as a group, I will also show you that I, I, I collect hats, and I brought back a headgear from one of the uh, dancers that oh. uh, made for a spectacular Halloween costume one year. But uh, next slide we were transported by what they call long tail boats from Bangkok to my pronunciation, bear with me, Damnion Saduk floating market. And a floating market is where they sell goods right out of boats in the water. And they all got started in times when water transportation was the important way of daily life. This particular canal Damio floating market is the largest and it's the most well-known floating market. And it um, is the straightest and the longest canal in Thailand. It was built on royal initiative by one of the kings and he wanted to connect uh, the, one of the rivers with the Chinese riverways to support transportation trade. And it took over two years to dig and was eventually finished under his successor. It's 32 kilometers long has more than 200 branches. Oh. It, got real, it got really popular in 1971-73 when there were lots of farmers in their boats selling their wares and they, they still use it today. So next slide. So that's the market. Wow. And uh, wow. We had a really good time. We, uh, I, I'm not one on vacation to chance getting sick on vacation. So I don't tend to eat in public open places like that mm -hmm. unless my guides can absolutely guarantee me that, you know, this is safe. We know we've done it, you know, but uh, it was just beautiful early in the morning with all these boats <coughs> arriving. Next slide. Mm. And it, it's like going into a, a Walmart. I mean, it's just crazy. They have 
anything you can imagine. I. Um, you just have to get your boat into the area that you want to see, and then you can shop. You t yeah, you tend to just sort of come up to the market and then get out and walk along the sides. Okay. Uh, it was kind of a mystery. That's funny you asked that, Lori, because the mystery for us was how did our boat get all the way through to meet us at the other end? We have no idea how he did that, mm -hmm. but he was there. But with all the branches and stuff, maybe it was no big deal. Yeah. Next slide. Wow. And then I think I have one last slide. And hey, one of those bananas has a uh, Walmart stamped on the side of it. Mm -hmm. Sure it does. <laughs> they put the stickers on over before they transport, right? Right. And this was, this lady was like, she was operating a restaurant. I mean, if you look to the right of her, you know, she's got all the dishes and stuff and you just came up alongside and sat in the Lotus position, which I'm never comfortable in. And she, served you. Wow. But it was really beautiful. Did we you... ran into we ran into floating markets uh, again. I think all of you know when I say we, it's Clarissa and I, 30 some odd years of spring break together. But um, <laughs> we ran into floating markets in uh, Cambodia. And in Cambodia, it, it's really much more factory like. It's like these huge boats come into these canals and they've got, uh, they, they put like a stake on top of the boat that says, okay, we're selling umbrellas, you know, and another whole boat might be selling produce, you know, but not low flat boats like this. I think that's it. Interesting. Huh, very cool. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> There's Brutus. Where's Lo oh, we don't have Lois, do we? Well, do we want to skip those slides and I'll text her? Where is, is that? Does anybody? Play? Hey, Debbie, can you text her? Yeah. It's down around uh, around Columbus, Kansas, Southeast, Cole. Oh, okay. Well, I can help. I can tell some of that story if anybody. Uh, if you if you've never seen Big Brutus before, I've never seen Big Brutus. Uh, when they were, when that the Pittsburgh area was so inc incredibly good for uh, coal mining, um, Big Brutus was built on the spot, and it let's see I think its high speed is about one one hundredth of a foot in an hour. <laughs> Slight exaggeration. Wow! It's you don't put it on the highway and, and ever try to pass it. Um, the company uh, who built it, uh, Bucyrus Erie Company, um, when they finally decided the, the, the coal's gone, they didn't take it anywhere. They couldn't disassemble it, or they could, but they figured it wouldn't be worth it because it was out of date by that out of date by that time. And so it's now a uh, international monument. Wow. Well, it's at least it's a state monument. The coal mining, interesting. Very cool. And you can visit. I mean, it's it's kind of interesting to visit. Oh, Barbara. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is Michael Jackson. <laughs> 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 um, this was from actually right about this time last year when our church went to Egypt and um, they were taking registrations for it just about the time I retired the December prior and my husband said, hey, would you want to go to Egypt as a retirement present? And I'm there going, oh, heck yeah. Um, and so we went and um, this was going up Mount Sinai and we had planned to um, climb Mount Sinai totally and we had trained quite a bit of walking because it's like two and a half miles up before you get to the stairs. Well, fortunately, um, this is going to sound weird, but fortunately, my husband was sick the week prior and he just didn't feel like he was up to walking that. So we rode the camel the first two and a half miles and then took the last 750 steps. And that was the best decision. If you ever go, by all means, re ride the camel because 
you go during the night. We left about two o'clock in the morning, I think, to get to the sunrise and or up there at sunrise. And um, the people who walked, of course, it's dark. So you've got a, a flashlight and you're looking down at your feet so you don't trip over the rocks. Well, we got to look around us. We got to, as the sun started to, as it started to get somewhat light, we could look around and see that. Whereas if you're walking, you can't do that. Okay, so, and notice before we move forward, his teeth snarling out, Michael's yeah. teeth. Okay, so Jonathan, move to the next one. This was the top amount. Oh, they're not in order. Okay. <laughs> um, <right>. Well, <laughs> that's okay. Um, I was going to tell a story. Well, I was going to show you at the top of Mount Sinai, but we'll get to that. Um, and this, of course, is at the pyramids and um, the, the uh, camels there. Um, the pyramids was probably the most disappointing part of the trip, to tell you the truth, because it was the most commercial part. Mm. You know, the guys come up to you and they want to take your picture and, and all that. And so, mm. I mean, it was, of course, fun. Uh, but uh, and I should have been like Charlie. I should have worn my little turban today, too. But I'm not sure I could put it on myself. Uh, OK. Move forward. Okay, this was Michael Jackson as I was coming down the camel. And the reason I added that picture in, and I thought it was the one where, oh no, the other one he was snarling. Um, as we were coming back down the mountain, I stopped for a minute to talk to the guy that had led Michael up there and Michael was standing. And as I was talking to the guy, the camel turned around and bit me. I mean, big time bit me. Thank goodness it was chilly and I had a jacket on, a padded jacket. Um, I should have put a picture of my arm in because it was really black and blue. And thank God I had a jacket on because those camels, I mean, their mouths are just nasty. <laughs> but you know what? It ended up being kind of fun because I met so many people on the trip. Oh, you're the one that got bit by the camel. <laughs> so it was, it was it was quite a good interaction piece, but you know, I got checked by a doctor and all that, and it was fine. <laughs> are they okay. typically unfriendly animals? Oh yeah, yeah they they are not nice animals, and I don't know. Maybe he was maybe he was mad because I wrote and rode him for two and a half miles, but <laughs> well, and and they're very impulsive. We were warned as particularly as you get on them to beware that they bite and spit. Yeah. Oh, they do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next. Okay, this was, um, it, I took this with my iPhone, so not a great picture, but this was the sunrise at the top of Mount Sinai and it was, it was unbelievable. <laughs> uh, so, okay, and we had a little church service up there too. Next. Barbara, that makes a really nice abstract. Yeah, oh yeah. Picture. Huh. My husband has much nicer ones that he took with his camera. I included this just to show after we got off the camel, we had to go up 750 steps just to show what the steps looked like. They were like pretty uneven and <laughs> um, not just little stairs like in your house. Okay. Um, this was at the base of Mount Sinai. It was at Mount Catherine Cemetery and it is the burning bush. There's controversy whether it really is the burning bush or not, but um, supposedly it is. Uh, okay. And then as an extension, there was an extension on the trip over to Petra in Jordan. And at first my husband said, oh no, that Egypt trip is enough. And I'm there going, we're all the way on the other side of the ocean. Of course we're going. And he was still hesitant. And so I said, okay, I'll meet you at home. <laughs> He did end up going with me, though. <laughs> and this is going into Petra. And I believe it's about three quarters of a mile long that you go through the, um, the carved out area there. And you can see on the left hand side kind of an indentation. And that's part of their irrigate or their water system. And it goes, my husband knows the exact degree, but I think it goes 12 inches down over a full mile. So it's a very slight. Um, decline there. Okay, next. We'll be coming out of it. And that's still the, um, the mm. passageway. Next, you'll not you'll, pro you'll probably, recognize, yeah, you'll probably recognize the next picture. 
because that's the treasury that was in um, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, I think. Yes. It, it, it is breathtaking. <laughs> okay, and I think there's one more should be another. While that the treasury is nice, this was my favorite. I went up there and went inside it and um, it was it was unbelievable. Mm. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Probably my second favorite trip of all time. <laughs> what was your favorite one? Well, my favorite was Northern Ireland, but that's mainly because I get got to meet relatives there and meeting family. Um, actually, I got to meet the daughter of my grandfather, my grandfather's brother's daughter, but my grandfather never met his own brother because he came to this country before his brother was born. So it was extra cool to meet them. Wow. But I love Egypt. It's filthy but it's worth a trip. And it's funny because we were not let loose from our group at all. We could not part from the group. And I think back in 2010, I had some, there were some students from Egypt at Johnson County Community College. And I'm connected via Facebook with one of them who just this year implemented his business plan that he wrote at Johnson County. <laughs> and um, he wanted to get together and you know we were not allowed to go apart from the group at all for security reasons. Sure. I was in Egypt when the first bombs hit Iraq. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Oh. But if you get the chance, I'd recommend either one of these or both. <laughs> Very cool. OK, I think that's it. Oh, this is cool. Yeah. <laughs> we did this last year. <laughs> All right, Jim, you're up. I took a slightly different approach. Uh, I selected five locations that are within probably eight mile or eight hours of here. So we could all visit even during COVID if we chose to. Nice. I had no pictures. So thank you, Jonathan, for having something here. Clear Lake, Iowa is well known because that's the site of where Buddy Holly died. And, 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 and what? And, what? Buddy, Buddy and who else? Richie Fallon's a big bopper. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And who didn't die was Waylon Jennings. He was supposed to be on a plane with them, but he gave up his seat for another of the singers. Yep. yep. Anyway, there's a thing that makes Clear Lake very famous is the surf ballroom, which is where Buddy Holly and the group performed the night before they died. And it's still there. It was built in 1934. It's a big dance floor, if you will. It has some risers where there are tables and chairs and you look down on the floor where people dance and they still do that. And it's also a neat town because it's right on the lake, a beautiful lake, and they have tremendous activities throughout the year on the lake. So it's really a nice place to visit, probably, oh, about maybe six hours from here. Mm. So Clear Lake, Iowa. And ironically, years ago, Marilyn and I were in West Virginia and saw this poster for the Buddy Holly performance. So I called the Clear Lake Chamber of Commerce and said, is this really the Buddy Holly poster? And I said, yes, he was only here one time. So we have the poster. Next. <laughs> Jim, Jim? Yes. Uh, yes. Jim, while, while you were there, did you go, I think it's in Mason City that's real, real close. And there's a Frank Lloyd Wright um, hotel there that you can I've actually- I've been by it. Yeah, I've been by it, but didn't stay there. We stayed there and you can tour it as well. Okay. And it's fascinating. You're right. It's close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thank my, you. My brother-in-law lived in Terrell, Iowa, and they used to go there when they were younger and dance. Really? Yeah. It's their ballroom. So we stopped there last year when we were all making our trek to Minnesota to, for a wedding. And unfortunately, the risers you talked about, my brother stepped off of one of the, my brother-in-law stepped off of those and dislocated his shoulder. Oh. oh. We went to Mason City to the hospital. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not to see the house <laughs> oh my goodness but anyway it was an, it was fun to see it's worth a visit yeah next next it's coming patience <laughs> oh <laughs> you know me <laughs> you know actually i'm getting things a little out of sequence here but that's okay i added something on late but Mount Vernon, Iowa is 
a neat small town. It's close to uh, Cedar Rapids. The college itself, uh, Cornell College, every building except the student union is on the National Historic Registry of Old Buildings. Oh. And so it's a neat place and they have a very unique curriculum. They call it the compressed curriculum. I think that's not quite the word, but at any rate, what it amounts to is students take one class at a time for about three weeks. Then there's a short break and then another class. And so that's how the curriculum is set up. But again, it's a very quaint town, uh, a lot of old homes, a lot of front porches, uh, nice restaurants downtown, a nice place to visit. Jim, I did my undergraduate at Cornell. Did you? Yes. Well, and you I, was, I, was a student, I was a student representative on the curriculum committee. Is that a beautiful campus? It is gorgeous. So was the compressed curriculum in place when you were there? No, no, no. That followed me. Okay. When was oh. this college established? Uh, uh, 18 something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. That's terrible. But Cornell College is the same family as Cornell University in Ithaca. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did you go see Bill Lamb while, while you were there? No, but it's close to Cedar uh -huh. Rapids. Very close, probably 15, 20 miles. Yeah, it's sort of halfway between Cedar Rapids and Iowa City. Yep. Very good. Thank you. Next. <coughs> Northfield, Minnesota. Actually, if you're from Clear Lake to Northfield, it's not that far, but Northfield is a wonderful, wonderful kind of what I would call a hippie small town. On one end is a very conservative St. Olaf College. On the other end of town is the more liberal Carleton College. In between is the bank where the great Jesse James bank robbery took place. Uh, Northfield is a very upscale town. There's also a malt meal company there. So between the two colleges and Malta Meal and the tourism industry, uh, it's a very, very nice town. Uh, at some time there was money there and probably mm -hmm. still is. Uh, the downtown area, uh, there's a river that runs right behind. It's very scenic, just a nice place to go and nice place to visit. Thank you for the picture, John. That's great. Next. Pella. That's on my Pella, list. Iowa. Pella. <laughs> a very scenic place, not too terribly far from Des Moines. Uh, it's a built around a square. It has lots of neat shops, uh, a butcher shop, a bakery. Uh, it has a college there, uh, Central College, a great hotel. It's just a nice place to visit. Pretty easy to get through from here. And uh, it, it's a very, again, fairly affluent town. Uh, Palo Windon Door <laughs> Company is there. Uh, Vermeer Company, and of course they have the college. And so there's a lot going on in Pella. The Tulip Festival is usually about the first week in May. So a nice place to visit. The, you know, the Dutch I, windmill is very cool also. Oh yeah, absolutely, Dick, that's a good point. Beautiful, it's built around a square again with the windmill in the middle. Uh, just a nice place to go if you like small towns, which obviously I do. And of course you can tour that and it's well worth it. Thank you, yes. I'm glad you're chiming in, all of you. That's good. Some people have been there. Okay, next. Cliff's Notes version of my presentation here. Now, this is a place you probably often have been to. But if not, you need to go to the Amana colonies. And again, not terribly far from Pella. There are seven colonies. Uh, the largest is called uh, Amana. And it's the kind of a place, this is a perfect picture, it's the kind of place where you can park and walk throughout the entire village. Uh, beautiful old homes, a lot of them on the historic registry of old buildings, interesting restaurants. Uh, there's a place there that's a woolen factory. You can get all kinds of woolen clothes and blankets and so forth. And across the street from there is a really nice little brewery. And the interesting thing about the Amana colonies, people assume it's Amish, but it's actually its origin is German. So that's kind of a misconception. People say, oh, let's go and see the Amish country, but that's not correct, it's German. But that whole area, just from one colony to the next, it's just a beautiful scenic drive. You can just go from colony to colony, and uh, I think you would enjoy that. Nice. Next. Wow. Nice. Maybe I'm finished. Oh, that's me. 
Yeah, that's me. Okay. Um, I have a potpourri of shots here on uh, various travels. So um, I'll have to rack my brain every time I see one. This is, which trip was that? <clears throat> um, this is uh, Bryce Canyon, not Canyon, but it's a large canyon um, in uh, oh, southern Utah. <clears throat> Has anybody else been there? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, these pillars you see here are all natural uh, results of erosion or and lack of erosion in their case, um, known uh, as hoodoos. Yes. Uh, you'll hear the term used um, <clears throat> kind of facetiously here and there, um, but it's, it's an incredible sight. What you're seeing here is maybe one fiftieth of the available pictures. Wow. Um, and and around, around the park you can take. Uh, plus, and we didn't take the time to, uh, to hike, but there are trails down around there. Um, so it's about half, let's see, it's in the bottom 25% of the state um, on the way over to, uh, um, oh, come on, what's the matter? Not, this is Bryce. <clears throat> I can't think of the one that we missed out on. Uh, but anyway, um, it's, it's fabulous. I recommend it. Next. Dick, one point I want to make. When we were there several years ago, there were three, probably three or four teenage boys, probably middle school boys, and there were no barriers. When you look down over the cliffs, you could just fall straight down. There was nobody, nothing to stop you. There were three boys up at the very edge looking down. Another boy came up and gave them a shove, you know, just playfully. We thought we were going to see four boys go over, down, and tumble forever. Oh. It was the scariest thing we've ever seen. Was oh. it there at Bryce? Yes. Wow. He could end never, up, he, we've never he, forgotten it. <laughs> well, he could end up being skewered by a hula hula. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now, this is a picture I call uh, Beach Ball Lost. <laughs> it's uh, uh, San Francisco Bay. And if you look in the upper right hand, about two thirds away from left to right, you see a column with... Uh, Oh, I mean, obviously uh, wires. Yep. That's the Golden Gate. Oh. It's the the uh, the southern side, the Fra the Fra uh, Francisco San Francisco side. Um, <clears throat> so I just love the colors, the uh, the clouds. Mm -hmm. I just like that shot. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Okay, we can move along elsewhere. <laughs> um, I will have uh, joined, who was it up in Alaska? But it wasn't Charlie, who was? Jerry. Jerry. Oh, yeah, Jerry, Jerry, okay. This is Jerry, you know what railroad this is? Out of Skagway. Oh yeah. Um, it's a fabulous train trip out of this little bitty village that was the start of the gold rush when lots of people died trying to get up to the top and over the top down into the Yukon area. Uh, but the train trip is well, pretty much all day, but oh, it was well worth it. Um, this tries to catch some of the beauty of it. Ends up where you're heading toward Canada. And once you get there, it, um, it turns around or it doesn't turn around, it reverses gears and heads back down. Beautiful. Were you on a cruise when you saw when you were able to do this? Yes. Oh. Yeah, that was uh, our farthest north stop. We we were gone for a, a full week. We didn't do the the, the two week. Um, this was back in 05, our very first um, of two. Um, it, it's a it's a major float trip is how we thought of it. Um, but yeah, the first cruise we had, so we didn't know what to expect. Um, Skag was the farthest point, and we stopped in Juneau and Fairbanks, and you know, just about five or six different places. It's a it's a great great trip. One one of the things I'd mention about that, Dick, is that uh, you can actually take from uh, from the northwest corner of uh, 
Washington State, you can actually take what's called the Alaska Marine Highway Ferry. And it goes up and it'll stop in Skagway as well. And okay. it's, not a, it's not a cruise ship, but it's a ferry boat and it has rooms in it that, you know, that they're not, believe me, they're not fancy. <laughs> this was not a, but really nice and very, comparatively speaking, very inexpensive. Well, and the cruise itself uh, was almost within within sight of uh, of land the in, the entire trip. It's it's yeah. not out in the wild ocean at all. It's, so it's a very very no, uh, pleasant it trip. Takes that in, in 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 what do they call it? The inside passage. Inside passage, mm -hmm. which means there are there are larger islands out farther, and they they break a lot of the weather and and. Uh, uh, just makes it pretty pretty easy. Yeah, sea uh, voyage, not much seasickness. It's a beautiful did, photo. Did any of you stop at Sitka? I love. I, Sitka. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I I can't remember for sure. Well, it had it had all the Russian influence. Yes. Yeah. Is it along that that path? I was mentioning um just just a yeah it's an island it's a, it's an island not terribly far from from juno actually you can you have to fly there but. yeah okay we did juno but not juno's it has one interesting uh area uh, uh characteristic it although it has roads and highways within the city the capital city there are no highways no railways and no airports if you want to go to Juno, hop a boat. Did you and, go to? And I heard that when I first when I first heard that, I thought, "Oh, come on!" Well, when you get to to Juno, everything's vertical. Yeah. Well, the, Juno now has a real nice airport, actually. You okay. See, fly into Juno. Did you go to the garden in Juno that is upside down? That the the roots are on top and. I think it was a landslide, and they just made the best of it. Oh, I thought that was in Antarctica, where it was upside down. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Dick. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Better get me out of here, Jonathan. <laughs> well, that's cool. <clears throat> wow. This is Lake Michigan. Um, just one of the many lighthouses. Um, I, I kind of flipped a coin as to which one I wanted to use, but um, the I like the angle here, and that's about it. Um, uh, I have a uh, if you want to earn some money from some uh, somebody who thinks they know it all, uh, uh, but you know the answer because here I am talking about Michigan. Which state has the most lighthouses in the country? A good guess would be Michigan. <laughs> And that's true. What city is this close to, uh, Dick? I do, boy, I don't know. I, I'm on the uh, Lake Michigan side, about halfway down, but I cannot remember all the towns. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's a great shot. Beautiful. Okay, that's good, John. What was this message? I didn't see. Oh, that's wow. Now, I believe this is uh, Denali. Now, the reason I believe it is <clears throat> nobody pointed it out. I was on a turbo prop from Anchorage flying to Bethel, not Bethel, Kansas, but Bethel, Alaska, yeah. uh, which is uh, Oh, what was our uh, vice president uh, from, or I mean, the uh, uh, candidate? Um, yep, I'm a lady. Yeah, our lady. Remember her uh, her famous uh, notion that you, you where she Alaska. lives or where uh, you can almost you can almost see Russia. Yes. Yeah, I was there. I was there. Oh. Bethel is far, 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 almost as far west as you can go. Yeah. Um, and it's allegedly the sixth largest city of Alaska. 
which means absolutely nothing when you have about a thousand <laughs> people there. Yeah. Sarah Palin is the name you were searching for. Yep. Era, yeah, yeah. That's there you go. Um, so anyway, I just had never been to Alaska, and I certainly had never seen De uh, Denali. Um, but it, there were no there were no higher mountains that we saw on the way out to Bethel. So I I named it Denali. Denali is the tallest one in the northern hemisphere. 20, 20,000 feet. Yeah. And you could be standing on Denali and not see it. <laughs> How so? Fog? It just makes its own weather so much so that it's really uh, hard to. Well, I got it on a good day then, I guess. Yes, you did. Wow. When we were there, we saw three consecutive days, which they said was almost never wow. something you could happen to happen. Three days in a row. Wow. Okay. When when we were on a, when we were on up in Denali one day we took a a little we drove up and you could drive you could only you're, you're only allowed to drive in 16 miles and while we were driving up there there was a guy standing beside the road and we and he had binoculars and we stopped and I asked him what he was looking at he said well yesterday I was by here and I saw a bunch of grizzly bears up here on the side and I looked down below. And I could see two grizzly bears standing on their hind legs going, whoop, whoop, whoop. A park ranger pulled up beside us and said, boys, you guys can need to get back in your car immediately. Those bears can cover the distance from where they're at to where you're at in about 1.7 seconds. <laughs> oh uh, I said, OK. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we can fly on. Um, this is an old cabin I saw, um, <clears throat> oh gosh, I'm trying to, oh, uh, Pagosa Springs, uh, Colorado. Um, we spent a week there and uh, <clears throat> driving around the countryside. I saw this old cabin and it just said, if this place has a story, I wish I knew it. Uh, but I don't, other than the, the, the modern ranch is about a half mile up the road uh, and it looked like they were fairly productive and this is no doubt where they started <clears throat> so that's just yet yeah, i thought a little romantic thing mm -hmm. um and then the next one is probably my last one <coughs> Harley, this is not Egypt. <laughs> um, no camels. This is, in my guess for this is, it shouldn't be a hard guess. Great Sand Dune Monument in uh, California. Sa uh, no, South Central Colorado. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I've been there twice in my life. No, three times now, and it's uh, it's it's amazing to me. It gives you a, this shot. You know, it looks like it's an aerial shot, but it's not. Um, it does. I don't. I'm, I remember taking it, but I can't remember why, how I got up there. Standing on top of the car, I guess I don't know. But uh, people hike. You you can hike forever. The uh, the the reason they uh, the sand dunes are there is a kind of a prevailing southerly winds from out of New Mexico mm. uh, that they drop drop the granules the the, uh, uh, the sand pieces at the foot of the Rocky Mountains and the wind didn't have doesn't have capabilities normally to get them up over and so they just drop them there and they have a big Sahara look-alike. Yeah. yeah. It's very interesting to get to. Wow. Wow. I haven't seen that. And I think that's probably all I have, Jonathan. <laughs> okay, I got a little carried away. So <laughs> bear with me, I'll try and get through these quickly. <laughs> so in 2015, Dave and I went to Ecuador. Um, it was intended to go with some friends of ours and they got sick before we left. So we went with the tour group on our own. 
um, that we've never been to South America. I don't think Dave's even been to Mexico. So we didn't get that, you know, as far as a, a Hispanic country. Um, so we got to Quito. We spent a couple of days in Quito, which is our capital city, and it's home to over 3, 000, 3 million people. The houses are packed side by side by side. I mean, they're just, just they're close together everywhere. And I did find out that in, in addition to Quito and Krakow, Poland, with the first uh, World Heritage sites declared by UNESCO, which is kind of cool. Uh, next. This is a view, and the previous slide was too, a view from the uh, Itchambia Cultural Center, and it shows the Basilica of the National Vow, which is a Roman Catholic church. Throughout Ecuador, there are Catholic churches of, in abundance. Um, and from the, the top of the hill there, we could also see the Winged Virgin Mary statue. Mm -hmm. Next. Uh, the churches and religions of Ecuador, uh, they're prominently Roman Catholic. There's a few other faiths um, here and there. And they pack, practice a mix, mixture of Catholicism and traditional beliefs. And many of their churches are from the 16th and 17th century. Wow. They're all ornate. They're just beautiful. Next. So we went to a Panama hat store. Um, and that's why a little court there. Did you know the Panama hats are not made in Panama? <laughs> they are made in Ecuador. Um, the real Panama hats are made in Ecuador. And they needed a busier market to sell their hats. So they started selling them in Panama. And so they became the Panama hat. Um, That's a great it, hat for you. It, <laughs> yeah, I don't wear hats very often. I'm, I, I should bring one back for Charlie. <laughs> yes. Did you buy that one? No, we didn't buy any hats, actually. Um, I'm not a big hat wearer. Um, Looks good on you. Well, thank you. <laughs> So anyway, that was, that was the, the, it was fun. We were in the store for, I don't know how long all of us were um, trying on hats and, and, you know, modeling for each other and taking pictures and having a fine time. <laughs> Next. Then we went to the equator, which was really fun um, just to be there. So we <laughs> can tell Dave and I, one on each side of the equator, usually that's about right, one of us on each side of any discussion we might have. Um, we spent, I don't know, a good part of the day there. There, You can walk around the monument. There's restaurants there. Um, the mitad del mundo is, it means half of the earth or half of the world. Um, you also get your passport, passport stamped while you're there. Um, and then we stopped for lunch to do what we're there. But it was just really fun to, to be in that part of the country and just say that we've been to the equator. Yeah. Next. Octavalo uh, was one of the places that we stopped for the night. Um, we, the accommodations we had were beautiful, and I think they were probably places we never would have found on our own. Um, this is in the Andean Highlands, and all over, not just this resort area, but all over Ecuador, the flowers were fabulous. Mm. Um, this particular area is surrounded by volcanoes, and um, it was just gorgeous and relaxing and quiet and peaceful. Um, we couldn't have asked for a, a, any better accommodations. Next. So this is the open air market and I'm kind of with Charlie on this. I was pretty much um, not going near any of this stuff, but they had any kind of meat you could want um, and all parts of the animal were available. You come around a corner and there's pig's heads looking at you or, or a chief's skull. It was pretty, yeah. <laughs> so we went through that just with our mouths open looking around. And then we went to the um, area where they actually had, you know, um, clothing. <laughs> that was much more comfortable for us. But um, mostly the market was mostly run by indigenous people and they're, they had leather works, they had clothing, they had the open air market, um, jewelry, about anything you could possibly want. 
What else do I have written down? Pull yes. that in just a second. Marilyn wants to see all that meat. No, yeah, go no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any vegetables? <laughs> Not in that part that, of the that is some sight. Wow. You know, and, you know, I just it, it makes you wonder. You know, we're so careful with the meat products here, and they kept cold, and they have to have certain, meet certain guidelines. Wow. And it's just oh, it's there. And I don't know how long it been there. If it was uh -huh. like three days ago, or just this morning, it was butchered. You know, I don't know. It was pretty eye opening. <laughs> 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 My sister used to live in Argentina, and she got a parasite from eating the meat that was, they figure from the meat that was hanging in the market. Oh yeah, no. So these are some of the other things that we uh, came across over there. The first one is the guinea pig, and in fact, in that same town, we went to lunch in a restaurant, and this is not my plate, but um, one of the girls in our tour group ordered the guinea pig. <laughs> And fortunately, she was at another table, but I, many of us tasted it. I did taste it. It tasted like turkey or chicken or it was kind of fatty, so more like even goose. Mm -hmm. um, but I just told her, I said, I gave her the fork and I said, just get me a bite. I can't watch. And mm -hmm. she passed it back to me at the, my table and then I tasted it. But I, <laughs> I mean, they brought you the whole critter, splayed out on the plate, deep fried. Yeah. So it was pretty, mm, no. Um, then we had handmade ice cream, which was awesome. He made it in some kind of very cold bowl and they just kept turning it and turning it and turning it and eventually it was thick enough and then they scooped it into your um, combs. Oh. Oh. The middle one was the beetle larva. Um, it was the delicacy and they could eat it raw or cooked. Now, Dave and I did try it cooked, but <laughs> We ate it so fast, I have no idea what it tasted like. <laughs> <laughs> Swallowed it. <laughs> now, the one picture of the live beetle larva, the two guys that were our guides while we were in this part of Ecuador, um, they they lived in that area, and they ate them raw. They just squished it and right, shot it right down. So, oh, okay. And then the heart of palm and then the roast of tilapia, that was just, it, it was all cooked. <laughs> it was good. But I, uh, some of that stuff, I don't know how they could eat. And, and we were careful too, like Charlie said, you know, we didn't eat a lot of things unless the, our, we were at our resort or we're at a place that our tour guide had taken us to mm -hmm. that we knew was safe. Mm -hmm. I don't know that anybody bought any food out of that open air market. Uh, so next. So our next stop was on the way to the Amazon. So the place we stayed was La Casa del Suizo. Um, beautiful, beautiful resort in the Amazon. And the top picture is how we got there. Um, you couldn't get there. I don't, there wasn't a road, it was an island. And so they took us over on these really long canoe looking boats. Um, of course it's raining out. So there's Dave and I in the bundled up with our raincoats on. Um, wondering what we've gotten into until we got over there and found out how beautiful it actually was. Um, then our luggage, they went back and got our luggage on separate boats. Next. So these were our accommodations. That was the resort that we stayed at. Our rooms, while they had three walls, the third, the fourth wall had a screened in, it was so we like we stayed on a screened in porch holder there. Um, it was nice and quite humid during the day, but at night, at night it cooled off and it was beautiful. And then we, everybody had a hammock on the porch. Oh. So we could just hang out and relax. So oh, nice. It was, it was fun. Next. So this is a home of an indigenous family, Quechua. I'm not, probably not saying that right, but Camilla, which is the woman in the middle top picture, she owned the home and she and her family lived there and did little tours for this tour company that came through. I got the picture goofed up a little bit, but the very middle picture is a stick and it has um, uh, spikes on it. And that's what she would use to, as a grater. Mm. They, rather than like the metal graters that we use, she would use that to, to grate up her, uh, I think she was grating corn of some sort. Uh, 
and that's what it was. It was a tree from a ceiba tree, or it's by a limb from a ceiba tree. Mm -hmm. And then one of the unique things they would do, if they would call from, well, I won't say cabin to cabin, but place to place, they would use um, a shell, a snail shell to call, to make the noise. I don't know how you say that, as a horn. Mm -hmm. So because of all the rain there too, and their, their homes are all built above ground, and they were made of, their roofs were made of grass and leaves and dirt. And they could last for 15 to 20 years before they need to be replaced. Wow. And then they used island palm trees and cedar was for what they made the floors for. And one of the pictures I think uh, in the, the lower left-hand corner, what they're burning over there is, are termites. And the, the smoke from the termites is a bug repellent. So it kind of, it keeps the bugs out of the, out of their house. Mm. Mm. So, next. Um, this was our hike through the rainforest. The picture on the far left is the termite nest, which is much bigger than what we ever have here. Um, the next picture is uh, one of our guys, guides um, taking termites and he was rubbing them on his arms as a bug repellent. Um, we all had our own bug repellent, so he, he mm -hmm. went with the natural, <laughs> not us. Um, <laughs> The next picture is a walking palm tree. And I, well, I don't know if it's true or if it's legend, but they say that they, they grow new roots towards the sun. And as they do that, the old roots and the shady part die off. So the tree just keeps moving. Mm. So I don't know, it just, it, it says, they told us legend had it. So I don't know if it's true or not true. And then the next part was my glorious picture zip lining across the ravine. With my legs splayed, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, as we did this hike, that's the only way to get from one part of it to the other. If you weren't going to zip line, you had to go back down the hill. Um, that just wasn't an option. Next. This is, and I, there's no way I could have gotten the picture of the whole tree, but this is the base of a K-pop tree and it was over 300 years old and the base of it was big enough if you said that second picture to fit our whole tour group. And then there was still space on the sides. It was huge. And this is still the same hike that we took into the rainforest. And as we got to the top, that last picture is the view from the top. Wow. Over the trees and that was, I believe the Napa River that we were staying on, which was a, a one that fed into the Amazon. River. Mm. Next. Yeah, it is an upper ribbon. Here's another picture from one of the top or upper buildings from the resort we were at. Oh, that's so pretty. It was just peaceful there. It was so nice. Next. Nice presentation, Lori. Thank you. Well, I got cheated because I told Jonathan I had a lot of this done to do a travel talk a couple years ago, and we, then we ended up canceling it. So. Mm -hmm. But you have is this a program that you um, go from page to page and enter stuff in the te in text too. Say that again. Is that a program? Is it a a, a uh, an automated program that you can enter the pictures and the and the text and place them? It's PowerPoint. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Huh. It's come a long way since we used to use it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so. This was on our way to Banos, and it was called the, De I can't say that, it was called the Devil's Cauldron Waterfall, mm -hmm. and I don't, I tried to find out how many steps were down to the base of this waterfall, and I couldn't find it anywhere, but Dave and I walked about halfway down, and on the second picture, if you look just on the edge of the left side, you can see the staircase of people coming down. Mm -hmm. And how fierce that water is. It, it was just roaring. You couldn't even hardly talk with each other. It was so loud. And the second picture, again, there's more of the walkway coming, or the third picture, more of the walkway coming down mm -hmm. towards the bottom. Dave and I only went about halfway down, and then we looked down to see how much further we'd have to go, which was fine. But, the, you know, look, every time you go down, you got to come up. <laughs> so yeah. we didn't go all the way down, but 
part way through the part we were in, we had to go across the suspended bridge, which was quite long. And of course, you get a few people on there, then it starts doing this. So we're all hanging on pretty tight to make sure, you know, and it's safe. It's, it's, it's got screens on the side. Nobody's going anywhere, but it feels like you are. Um, so we went across that and went a little bit further down and to see. It was just, it was fabulous. I've never seen a waterfall like that. Next, please. Also in Banos, we had um, went to a store that made tag, I think it's Tagua. Um, it's vegetable, they carve vegetable ivory since ivory is illegal. Um, they carve these little critters out of vegetable ivory and they carve little ones, big ones. You know, sometimes the nuts are, are much bigger. They can get a bigger object out of them. Uh, that bottom picture shows the progression from a nut to the final little, I don't know, penguin or whatever he is wow. that they showed. And then the top uh, left picture is the, the, pal the palm nuts as they come out of the, I don't know what they, the, the, the nut, I don't know how you say that, but he grinds, he's a grinder and he does beautiful work. So I have some little guys here. There's a little elephant. There's a little turtle. Aww. Yeah, so those are our little our souvenirs we brought. But it was fun to watch them make it and see, you know, what they could create out of a, just a nut. It was beautiful. Next. Oh, the other thing, Banyos does mean bathroom, but it also means bath. So when we got there, we kept saying, well, we're going to the bathroom? Well, I mean, we, we weren't quite sure what was going on, but he they explained that it also means bath, since that was the name of, and they, the town was famous for its hot springs. Next. Oh, no, not next. You're there already. Oh, go back. Go back. <laughs> okay, so also Banos was coffee and chocolate. Um, one of their main exports is coffee. One of their main exports are coffee and cocoa beans. In the picture on the top left is a um, pod, and he cut it open to show us the cocoa beans inside. Yeah. And of course, so then we had to go to a chocolate store. Yes. So we could take a few things home with us. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Also in Banos was the Church of Our Virgin of Holy Water, a beautiful, beautiful church. And the outside, it looks very dark and goth. It's it's a neo what they call neo gothic architecture, but it's so dark because it's made from lava, the lava rock from the volcanoes around the town. Wow. Um, and people pilgrim pilgrimage to this church to pray to the Virgin Mary and thank her for her miracles, um, from all over Ecuador. And we went in there and there, the church was full. It was midday, but it was full. And they were having services. Um, beautiful architecture, beautiful paintings, beautiful. All of their churches were so ornate. Um, and even the walkway around the, the outside of the church was made of lava from the volcanic rock. Next. That's the altar inside of the church. Um, it was just spectacular. And the pictures on the side here, the, the entire um, church was lined with mur murals and, and paintings, smaller paintings, um, where people, their paintings depicting situations where the, it was thought that the Virgin Mary saved the people. Mm. And they also, it says there are many miracles in town that, that were attributed, attributed to her also. Uh, that next. Yeah. Roses. Uh, Ecuador, we didn't know that, but they are the largest producer of roses and most of the roses in the United States come from Ecuador. Right. So we, the bottom picture shows the, the ladies sorting the roses, getting them ready to be packaged. Some stations were picking off the 
not so nice parts of the rows and, and so they looked really nice before they were packaged again or discarding the ones that weren't uh, worthy of moving on. Many of them were grown in greenhouses. Uh, the cost down there for a dozen roses is $1.99. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so by the time we checked at the airport when we got there before we left and they were already at their airport were $20. You know, and we know what they are here. So <laughs> um, mm-hmm. the plantations down there are about 10,000 feet above sea level and they grow great, roses grow great down there because they really don't have a winter and it's closer to the sun. So they can grow them all year round. Next. And this was our last stop. It was a hacienda. Um, It was in Lasos, which is one of the oldest, most historical haciendas in the equator. And folklore says that a little girl got drowned in that pond many years ago and that she still haunts the hacienda today. The, they have guest rooms there that you can stay. They have a restaurant there, beautiful quarters um, all throughout the, the property. They have a church. Um, the last picture on the right is a church. You can see how ornate the staircases are. Um, there was a stable on the property. Just gorgeous. And again, every place we stayed was beautiful. Now, we didn't stay here. We just stopped here to look around and, and have lunch, but that wasn't um, one of our lodging places. I left a number of places out that we were at. Lori, what tour company did you go with? Eight one. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, the trip was super reasonable and it provided everything. Yeah. I think we paid for maybe one lunch. All of our meals were provided, all the transportation was provided, the lodging was fantastic. Um, Our guides were fantastic. Our driver was a rock star driving that bus through the mountains. On the hairpin tour turns. Yes, but anyways, it was a great trip. So that's the end of it. Even though I had a lot of slides, I talked fast. So I'm done. You did a great job. Thank you. Lori, can you say the name of the tour company again? Gate One. Gate One, okay. Driving the buses through the downtown of Quito was also an adventure. Oh yeah, like I said, we told him he was a rock star. He was fantastic. Mm. We're all sucking in our breath thinking, oh, you're not gonna make it, but he did. (laughs) Yeah. Uh Good job, everybody. Yeah, good job. It was great. I'm ready to go. Me too. I just don't know which way. <laughs> I'd go anywhere about right now. <laughs> Helen? Yes? I was embarrassed that I did not remember the uh, date of establishment of my alma mater, so I looked it up, and Cornell College was 1853. Wow. Oh, thank wow, you. Wow, yeah. And... Here's the, I don't know if you can see it very well, the headdress from the Thai dancers. Oh my. Wow. I want to know how you got that home. Uh, Clarissa will tell you I wore it. Oh, oh. no way. The Whoa. top comes off, which helps. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, I'll be there. Look at you go. <laughs> she has a whole collection of outfits from these different countries that she visits. It's That's very fun. Very yeah. fun. Make, it, they would make an interesting football helmet. <laughs> oh, you might have to have a presentation someday when we're all back together on Chris's Clar- or Clarissa's on Charlie's hats and, and costumes. That would be very interesting. I'd need a personal dresser though, because there's several <laughs> of them. Uh, I think most of you remember Barbara Joyner. Yeah. Yes. Um, I brought back a sari from India and had no idea how to put it on, so she dressed me for that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Barbara went and nursed in India, didn't she? She lived there for two years, yes. Oh, my. That's her. And, and this, this hat, and who knows what my hair looks like at this point. Like I said, we bought it specifically because it was sunny. And I don't know if I can make it do it, but it collapses. 
Yeah. Oh, I've got one of those. Is that from Thailand? That's from Thailand. Yeah, I've got one from Thailand like that. Yeah, it's wild. That's yeah. got nice ventilation on the top too. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> well, thank you, Jonathan, for putting all this together for us again. Yes, thank you, Jonathan. Yes, it was really interesting. Volume back. <laughs>